Hello, 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 all our wonderful people. Type in where you are. Can you believe I get to be with two of my fabulous artists, Katie Vernon and Ruth Burroughs? Hello, Katie and Ruth. Hi, Lila. So excited to Hi. be here. Um, so type in in the chat where you are. Be sure at the bottom of the chat you have it set to everyone, not just host and panelists. Okay, here we go. Kim popped up her, her message. We have so much goodness today. I'm going to ask these two brilliant women how they have done these extraordinary books, authored illustrated picture book by Katie Vernon, brand new, just out, Procreate how-to book. We fought over this yesterday in the studio and we will show you this and ask both of these brilliant artists how they do what they do and uh, then we will I will pop up somebody for a career tarot and Q&A and then I will do a giveaway of Artie book course I think that's what I'm giving away right does anybody know <laughs> him or is Becky here we'll 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 just do that one. Oh yes oh good she says yes fabulous so uh, type in if you are, if you've ever taken a mats class before. Hello, Greg and Jody and Beck. Yeah, okay. And type in no if, or type in new, if you're new to this whole cult. <laughs> type in new. Um, it is kind of a cult. So let me introduce my fabulous guests. Katie Vernon is right here. She's an illustrator, spent most of her life in the Midwest, but now she lives in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is the southwest of the United States, it's sort of desert and gorgeous. She shares her studio with a large cricket that sings to her all day long. This tells you something about the mind of the Katie Vernon. <laughs> She's gathered lots of inspiration from being a florist, working with alpacas, like to find out about that, and living on a bus. I love her, right? I mean, I love, she writes, I love working with inky paints and then arranging and adding detail digitally. So she works traditionally and digitally. A few things she likes, seltzer water, good to know, <laughs> rearranging furniture, thrifting with her hubby, yeah. Biking with my her daughter, walking with her corgi German shepherd chihuahua, and she calls it a chi her G. Some of the amazing people I've had the pleasure, she's had the pleasure of working with Anthropology, Chronicle Books, Creative Co-op, who does incredible furniture, Hallmark, IKEA, Land of Nod, Legacy Publishing, Oopsie Daisy, Papyrus Square Books, Roger Laborde, Running Press, Tag, The Washington Post, and she is now working on her second authored illustrated book. That is fabulous. Welcome, Katie Vernon. So Thanks for having me. Yay. I'm yeah. so happy to be here. We're so happy to have you, and I know our students, our, our, our participants are going to love every minute. Ruth Burroughs, welcome Ruth. I'm so glad you're here. Hi. Ruth Burroughs, very interesting, studied theater design at Nottingham Trent University, UK. Theater design, it's all gonna make sense in a minute. She then relocated to Abu Dhabi where she enjoyed a 20 year career in event design. So those of you who are like, am I too old, please? First of all, you're all younger than me and age is nothing okay you can do anything at any time so she did 20 years of event design and then became a represented illustrator doing all kinds of great gigs during that time she designed and developed concepts for many high pro profile events including large-scale festivals national day celebrations ramadan and, and eye decorations and seasonal decor for many of du dubai's malls she started to develop uh, an interest in illustration, and uh, then she took Make Art That Sells. Both of these artists 
our Make Art That Sells graduates and still continue to take the courses, by the way. So they're going to talk to you and answer your questions about Make Art That Sells and the courses and how it was useful to them. And that's how I discovered them and plucked them out to represent them. That's what I do. That's my love. Let's see. So she signed up for numerous courses, Ruth did, and entered the Global Talent Search twice, which was about seven, eight years ago. She made the top 50 and that encouraged her to take illustration more seriously. So think about what's making you take illustration more seriously. What is it? Did something good happen or someone say something? Or did you do a piece? Type in something that spurred you on little or big. Okay. The opportunity arose at the beginning of the pandemic in, in 2000 to concentrate fully on the courses because there weren't many festivals and fairs. So then at the end of my year of art school for maths, make art that sells, she felt confident to send, submit her work to my agency. And she sent this gorgeous, oh, do I have it? Oh, I don't know where it is. I should have grabbed it. But she sent a beautiful book that she put together, printed out and so forth. And we took her on right now. So her studio is both an open studio and art shop. So cool. Entrepreneurial in the historic market town of Sleaford in sunny Lincolnshire. Yay, welcome, welcome. So people put in, thank you, Ruth. I'm so glad you're here. Me too. So glad. People put in any questions in the Q&A and uh, Katie and Vernon, I mean, Katie and Ruth, can you open the Q&A and see? I don't, are you able to do that? Yeah. Are, are they able to? So we're going to then ask, answer everybody's uh, questions. Oh, Lydia says, Ruth's book inspired me to pitch to Lilla. Wow. That's oh. great. Um, okay, so put your questions in the Q&A, and we're going to dive in. Don't forget, if you're just joining us, we are also doing a giveaway, and we are doing of the... Uh, already book course and if you already have it you can gift it to someone and I will pop up somebody and you can ask me anything you want and I'll do your career tarot okay so um so Katie Vernon or Ruth Burroughs do you want to answer any of these just jump in Rebecca has a question I mean, I could definitely speak to finding your style. Um, Do you want to read us the question? Sure. Rebecca asked, as an artist, when was the moment you felt that you had found your, quote, style? What did you do to find it? And she says, I love both of your styles. Thank you, Rebecca. That's really nice. Um, I, I mean, I feel like I'm still working. I think the work that you make is your style, and it just evolves the more work you make. It's all about just putting time in, finding little things that you like. Um, for me, I really like handmade textures. So that's what I'm always kind of looking towards. Um, and I just, I know I wanted to find a process that felt very free. So for me personally, I do a lot of do a lot of work on really cheap paper so that there's zero pressure. And then I do a lot of digital editing um, to kind of have some control. So I think it's about finding what feels comfortable to you. And you just got to keep making work. It'll come. The style will come. Ruth, your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, for me, I didn't realize I'd found my style until I felt a kind of confidence. So I felt like I, I could create anything and people, like I could try different mediums and different subjects, but people would still know that it's mine. 
And by people recognizing my work, um, I felt that there was consistency, even though it didn't feel like it to me. And that gave me a confidence. So now I've, you know, every day you gain more confidence, but you, um, yeah, you feel like you can tackle anything and it'll have your style. And, you know, um, I think, you know, you're someone asked about the appropriate book uh, that that uh, Ruth Burroughs did. Um, you know, you, you kind of have a style when you're feeling more comfortable, more comfortable than less comfortable. Like it tips the scales like, yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. When I was an illustrator early on, I remember I wrote down like my style, like I slant everything to the right. I use this charcoal pencil on this paper and I do this and this like I actually had to like list it because I would forget and then I put yeah. up a few pieces I don't know that's crazy but we all get there it's absolutely true okay thank you Rebecca for that question is there another one that you kids want to answer how about oh talk about your media that you use your mediums Traditional, digital, what paper to use, what ink, what paint? Um, yeah, I use a ton of different media. Um, I really like acrylic ink, but I really like how it sits on a certain type of paper um, so that it creates, you can kind of see like these nice kind of pools of ink. I love pencil. Um, is there any material you don't like? No. Huh, I don't know. I don't use oil, um, oil paint. And I rarely use just straight up watercolors. So I like layering them in, but um, I think I don't use anything just by itself. I think I just keep piling on more stuff. So you make a casserole. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Cool. And then you scan it in and work digitally. I do a lot of finishing details in Procreate. Yeah. In Procreate. Mm -hmm. Bing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to sell like crazy. I mean, and I just, let me, I just have to tell you. So this came in yesterday, perfect timing. And look, she gives these play by play, like the actual, let me find this good part. She shows you literally the screenshots. Oh my God, how amazing. Look at this. I need this because I asked my daughter, will you show me Procreate? Yeah, maybe mom someday, <laughs> you know. But um, this is wonderful. I'm gonna read it this weekend. So Ruth, what materials do you use? Do you well, work traditionally okay. before you go digital? I am totally digital at the moment, purely because I'm pretty busy. And even though I'm literally sitting in the middle of my art supplies shop, which has everything, I don't get time to actually it's use it. frustrating. It's I do have like, a lot of um, hand painted textures and stuff that I reuse. So I have this one favorite texture that I keep putting into my artwork and rotating it and <laughs> changing the blending modes on it because it's such a good piece. It's literally just a, a scrappy piece of colored painting. It's on an A4 sheet and I use it all the time. Well, I love that because you know, people don't have to make it harder on themselves and do all yeah. that work. You know, you don't have to torture yourself and you can just um, improvise. That's great. So many of the illustrators and my students just work exclusively in Procreate and some work both. And it, I'm often asked, oh, do you have to do one way or another? It's all about the finished product. However you yeah. get there, it don't matter. Okay, let's see. Um, question by Anonymous. How much time per week do you dedicate to illustrating? And do you do it full-time or have other jobs? 
Katie Vernon, you want to start with that? Sure. Um, I illustrate what I consider to be full time, and that can range from, you know, 20 hours a week of making art to 30. I don't think I could, I don't think you can make art 40 hours a week. It's much more yeah. intensive than, like, you just need more breaks, I think, for I me. Agree. I think um, 20 hours is full time because it's yeah. hours, it's how much work. Even when I was full time doing 70 jobs a year, it was mostly editorial. So they were faster turnaround. Mm -hmm. I only worked like I could only do creative work for like two hours, traditional yeah. media. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And so I, you know, take breaks, go on walks, go thrifting. Um, I have a daughter who I pick up from school, you know, just things like that. And um, it kind of answers, I thought I saw another question about, um, oh, I don't know where it went. Never mind, I'll save it. <laughs> um, how about you, Ruth? Yeah, I've got a really nice balance at the moment because I opened my studio and opened the shop in the studio. Oh, she's doing a little freezing. Today. In the morning. Mm. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Yeah. I start off in the morning illustrating, but then people pop in. So I get customers and um, some people come in to buy stuff. Some people come in to chat. Some people come in to drink coffee. So it kind of, you know, it all evens out. It's, it's a nice day at the moment. You're living my dream. <laughs> I would love that. I, You know, because you want to balance your social. By the way, Everybody, please be sure that you are on, uh, sign up for uh, lilarogers.com, my newsletter, because I'm going to ask people, this is speaking of social, um, I'm going to put out an invitation for, I just want eight people to test out a new course I'm writing uh, for um, a four hour session here at my place. So uh, it's in Massachusetts. So if you want to find out about that, that's where I'm going to put my little invitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, Greg. So that's good. Okay, so let's see. Do you have, let's talk about Matt's classes. Tell me, we'll start with Katie Vernon because that's what we're doing. We're doing it in that <laughs> order. Um, Katie, what? Matt's why did you decide to take Matt's classes how did which ones did you take and how did they help you what and what advice would you have for people I mean so I started taking Matt's classes what like eight nine years ago I think um and for me it was like I needed um I had had some successful illustration jobs um before the Matt's courses but I needed just to be inspired, to refresh my art practice, refresh my style. So I just started with boot camp um, and then got addicted. So <laughs> it just snowballed from there. Um, my favorite, I think my favorite class is the home decor class mm -hmm. because it's probably the most, to me, the most fun. But I think the one that really changed um, and this was after being picked up by you as an artist, the one that changed kind of my um, career career was the illustrating children's book and then the pitching. The writing. The writing one. Yes. Um, she wrote this and got the book deal. Yeah. The illustrated. That was pretty cool. That's really cool. That's great. Um, okay, Ruth, your thoughts on Matt's how you found out about or why you started and what how it was beneficial what courses you've taken that kind of thing yeah I I became really addicted like if I if I <laughs> missed out on a on a live or Uh, a review or something like that, I, I get serious FOMO, like, and the Facebook page and the community and everything. And, and I was like scraping together the pennies. So I like, I'm waiting for the sale to get the full year of um, art school. And um, yeah, well, it paid off, didn't it? 
<laughs> Stay along now, people. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. It paid off. And by the way, uh, in the I just looked at the email before we went live. And as I mentioned to you, you just got an offer for uh, a book. Uh, for, I haven't for, seen that yet, but that I sounds know. exciting. <laughs> I, I have a really work. good good project. I have worked. Yeah. Every day. Uh, can you start over? Say that again. I've worked every day since you took me on. I haven't had a day without a project. <laughs> okay, top tip. I want to tell you why these two artists are so successful. I want you actually people type in why you think. And I will give you a hint. Color. Vivid, bold color. Lots of contrast. Lots of uh, punch so it can read small. These books can sell well when they're this big on a phone, the cover. A strong, quirky style. Uh, Katie Vernon is particularly a quirk master and she monetizes it and goes with it, but it's got a lot of heart. I just, I, I think this is one of the most brilliant starts of any book. I'm Ari. I mean, look at that kid. Uh, I, and I've been arranging things all my life and he's arranging the text, the typography. What a way to show the show. And it goes on and on. And she's just really quirky. It's about an, ex uh, an eccentric boy who arranges everything, even like the plants. And I, I'll, I'll just show my favorite one too. So he's just arranging the farmer's market stuff. I even arranged the kids at the pool and the afternoon jazzercise class. <laughs> and he's arranging the people. And I love the man in the middle. I mean, it, she also shows real characters. It's witty, but with a lot of heart. And then we have this chick, Ruth, with the vivid, the joy, the the just it's her work bursts she gives 110 let's see if there's I mean look at this look at this it's just people buy your joy she's having a ball even this the cover the back cover too it's just so engrossing and vivid so you know they're obviously these are people who really love what they do let me ask you both this was art always just so easy and you never stressed or felt insecure? <laughs> just day one, you were like fabulous with your work? No. <laughs> no one is. Um, I mean, I've always loved art. I studied art in college, um, but I was really good at like doing exactly what the assignment was and trying to please the teacher. And oh. I don't know, I've, it took me a long time to find what I, what pleased me mm -hmm. um, in my art. So um, it didn't come easy, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. But I loved it, I love it so much. So it was worth the time and worth all the, the cr crummy, crappy art that I made, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of crummy, crappy art in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But it's our wanting to get good because we love art making so much that keeps us going. Ruth, your thoughts when she's unfrozen? I am. Am I? Am yes. I here? Yes, you're here. I still don't think I'm very good at drawing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm good at drawing either. <laughs> but somehow it works, right? Um, you're very good at drawing. I, I, artist. I wouldn't call myself an artist at all. I can be a designer. I can be an illustrator. I'm not an artist. Am I? I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, I'm your agent and I'm saying, yeah, you are. Okay. Okay. This is you. The other thing is, years ago when I was in illustration school, I was like, okay, there's drawing, drawing, and then there's design, drawing. And I love design, drawing, where I would stylize. Um, and many of us now, it's very common to do design drawing. I mean, that's, those are really great kids. So 
I'm telling you, as your agent, you can draw. And what is drawing? I mean, okay, Katie you. really pushes it too with like, look at this dog. I mean, we know it's a dog, but there's a lot of paint going on. Yeah. <laughs> stuff. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we have another question. Oh, look at the chat because everybody's saying how they love your work and everything. Oh, thanks, everyone. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, there's so many questions. Hannah asks, do you have to have a lot of things in your portfolio before starting to make an arty book? So do you want to speak to that, Ruth? Um, yes, I think having a jam-packed portfolio is the only way you're going to get work and be successful as an illustrator. You have to be prolific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't get by just by having a few good pieces. You have to have a lot of good pieces. Mm -hmm. It's really true because you need to prove to the agent or the editor or the art director that you are capable of being consistent in your, in your style and you can handle it. Okay, so that's Hannah's question. Um, how do you know, Anonymous asks, if your art is good enough to sell or pitch to companies, this is a, such a common question, by the way. And she, she writes, I struggle with this so much, but maybe that's because my art is not good enough yet. Smiley face. Thoughts? That's tricky. Um, the thing is, why not, like, why not pitch it and see what happens? But if you're feeling uneasy about it, that's going to come through. Mm. I think so it kind of comes back to the confidence thing like you have to feel you have to feel good enough about your art to pitch it in a way where others will feel good about it too yeah yeah and and it's like I'm not a tennis pro in case you were wondering but to think I can be one tomorrow we would laugh if I wanted to be, and I was 40 years younger, I would have to work at it really hard to get good. That's all. Yeah. And guess what? Yeah. Anything you work hard at, you get good at. It's that simple. And I do believe, and I know it's self-serving, but I, I believe in taking courses. I believe in learning from pros. I believe in getting good tips and advice. I believe in deadlines. Because I was gonna say deadlines. That's huge. Mm -hmm. that is a huge one and that's too why the live courses are so good you have the weekly reviews you have the deadlines okay um here's a question so let's see beck asks to rith uh can you share a bit about how you developed your creative practice and do you have any handy tips like how do you get your but not now because you have deadlines and assignments and clients and an agent. But before that, how did you get your butt in the chair to do the art? Yeah, Max, make art that sells courses. <laughs> I, I would, I don't know what I would be doing if I hadn't taken that. Yeah, it's really hard to learn something on your own and stay with it. Yeah, I wouldn't have had a clue. I wouldn't have had a clue about the industry or, or you know, how to do anything, really. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I do. And that's why I, mean, I, I probably could have found. An, I could have found another way, maybe, you know, but this worked out perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. How about you, Katie B? Yeah. I mean, I would say that I floundered for a long time just making lists and then remaking lists and then procrastinating by making more lists of, I don't know, things to draw, things, big ideas. Um, yeah. I mean, eventually, yeah, you just kind of have to sit down and make art. Um, and the class, the Matt's classes is what forced me to sit down yeah. <laughs> and make some art. Um, That's so true. And then like for uh, my current creative practice, it's, it feels, 
I enjoy a little bit more flexibility. So I don't make art from a certain time to a certain time each day, but I do find, I know that if I'm going to have a productive day of making art, I need to be sitting down by 9 a.m., 10 a.m., like Excellent. get it done in the morning. Um, because then you get your daughter at like two or something. Yeah, I mean, the day is pretty short. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, it's good practice when my kids were home. I only had that time period too. Mm -hmm. And then once they left the nest, I was like, I can work 10, 12, 15. Hours. I can work so much. And I did, of course, and, you know, kind of burned out a little bit. But you get so disciplined with that limited time. So don't feel bad if you have a limited time or a job or kids or whatever. Okay. Um, that is a really good question. How do you sit down? So let's see, do you try to make, this is a good one. Rebecca asks, do you try to make your work likable? Do you ever discard things because they are too weird? AKA, how do you know when things are ugly versus interesting? <laughs> your thoughts, ladies. I mean, <laughs> oh, go ahead, you start this one. Um, I think again, it's about balance. So um, I start off trying to make everything nice and likable, but then I sneak in a few like weird things. Mm. And then um, you kind of have to balance the, the weird with that, like, like an unexpected color or, mm. you, you know, things that are unexpected. So then you sort of second guess and you think, oh, do you think the art director or whoever will go with that? And so, you, you know, you sneak them in and then you think, oh, no, I'll take a few out or do you know what I mean? Just to get the balance of really nice and friendly and likable, and but with something a bit unexpected. I love it. Um, Katie, your thoughts, because you embrace your weird, but you, yeah, I, I tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's toning down. Yeah. But you know what I want to do? I want to challenge you. Send do a piece where you don't tone it down at all, or a few, and send them to me. Yeah. And the thing is, when I was an illustrator, so my work was on the weird side, and and I had my odd brush lettering, and it was a different style than what was going on to some degree. But when I showed my most sort of fine art non-commercial stuff that in addition to my very more commercial work that odd stuff helped me get really cool jobs so it does differentiate all of you and what i want to tell you is because there is stock illustration where people can buy companies can buy it for generic nice work but it's rather you don't get a sense of an artist's brand so you don't, you can't compete with that. So you want to give something that looks like a human made it, that you made it, that it's your brand, that it's your mind is involved, your vision, your thoughts. So I, I you know, go weird. Yeah, if I go weird or eccentric or your interest, it doesn't have to be creepy weird. I don't mean that. And I'm using weird very generally. It can be, um, just your particular passions. Okay, let's ask answer another question. Um, oh boy, so we did that. How do you know your work is likable? Okay. Um, Julia Janeway asks, I'd like to know more details about how Ruth and Katie winnow down their ideas at the onset, like of this arty picture book course. Um, did you both apply to my residency? Yeah. So yeah. You're taking, they're taking the course now. Okay. So you know what people are talking about in the first week, it's about picking their idea. And everyone has a million ideas for an arty book, or maybe they don't, but after doing the first few pages of the course, they have a million. So how do you pick and stick? How do you say, yeah, this is what I'm going to do? I struggle with this. Yeah. Um, or sometimes, actually, this go around, I feel a lack of ideas. <laughs> um, 
or I feel like I'll have an idea and then I'll say, oh, that's probably been done. But as a good, actually, as Sarah Walsh said to me, she said, but it hasn't been done by you. So, you know, what can you bring to it? Um, so, so I don't know, Ruth, what do you think about having the lots of ideas and picking the one? Well, I've just realized that the two ideas I have are not my ideas, they're someone else's. <laughs> but I, I, I've convinced myself that they're my ideas. My first idea is actually your idea, Lilla, which was to do a book about, you know, my DIY and, and uh, building my house and stuff. And um, the other idea was actually um, from a publisher that wanted me to do something and I did a little pitch for it and it didn't get through the, the higher With them. Um, stages. But oh. she said I could still develop an idea. So yeah, I haven't even thought of my own original idea, but I'm going forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. However, you can get it, people. Uh, don't One, forget the cards in the course to yeah. use those cards to um, help you get ideas. The magic cards. It's kind of like the cream will rise to the top. The idea that's meant to be will present itself. Yeah, yeah. it will show itself as the clear winner. Mm -hmm. I think just gotta trust the process. Yeah, and you know. It really doesn't matter what the idea is. It's what you bring to it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and to remember too, those of you taking the already book course, which began on Monday and uh, I think closes uh, by the end of this week and the sale ends the end of this week. So if you want to get in there, do hop in. Um, sale. Oh, sale ends today. Is that true, Becky? Yeah. Oh, registration for my already book course ends tomorrow, but the sale ends today. Oh, oh, oh my God, everybody stop watching this. Go to the McCarthy <laughs> sale site and sign up. I don't want you to not save the money. Okay, uh, so what was I saying? It, it's what you bring to the thing. You, it, It's how you get excited, how you find ways into a topic. So, okay, that was an excellent question, Julia. Um, let's see, did either of you come from a different career over to art? Yes, Ruth, you want to take that one? Maybe somebody missed the intro. Yeah, um, I studied theater design and then moved to a country where there were no theaters. So I had to diversify a little bit and I got she studied design and, and then moved to Abu, Abu Dhabi. Yes. To yeah. And um, yeah, but it was, um, it still has helped with illustration because theatre design is all about the narrative, the story, the characters, the scenery, the settings. It's, it's illustration. So yeah, that, that helped. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and how about you, Katie B? Did you oh, start a different career? No, I, well, I just had lots of odd jobs, which even as a kid, I knew I would. I just, I knew I'd just do a lot of weird things. Um, I worked at a, like an old book binding um, shop. I was a florist. I was a landscaper. I poured wine at a winery. I worked on a alpaca farm. I mean, just bounced around so great yeah. I think so many people can um relate to either of your paths really I love too that illustration is a great thing for when you're a little older you know maybe out of I mean you can do it in your 20s but even out of your 20s well you can do it at any time and that's the beauty you can be in your 40s 50s 60s 70s and be an illustrator it, it's not dependent about age or a certain physicality and uh, you do just get better. So it gets easier. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, 
let's scroll. Um, let's see. Um, um, do any of you go through some? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Katie, go. Sure. Well, I, the one, if you're new to all of this, which Matt's class would you start with? Oh, that's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. What would you say? Well, I'd say if there's one in particular in a, um, um, that really makes you excited, like if the idea of home de decor makes you ex really excited or the one of, um, you know, this arty book, one makes you really excited, do whatever really lights you up. But oh, oops. if you're, um, if you, the boot camp is really good if you don't have time, like a lot of time, because it's at a really relaxed pace. So yeah, boot camp is huge, super popular. Yeah. So there are bundles too. And we like to make the bundles based on uh, what I think people need. So this is my semester of art school. It's all the classes from now to the end of the year. Some are live, some are self-paced. And it's if you really, if you really want to make this happen in your life, that's the biggie to sign up for. And I think that one's for 25, 45% uh, off. That one is, I think. Okay. Um, anything I say that's wrong, I'm sure that Becky and Jenny will correct me in the thing. That was called my semester of art school. It's all the courses. And yes, you can pay that one in installments. So that's really great. Then um, there is what that's the that's got the, the self-paced and the live courses. Live courses have weekly deadlines. It's, it's paced out. It you get the stuff in increments and there's a weekly live review with me which is super helpful if you want not the self-paced courses a little cheaper you can get my semester of art school and this is just the live courses not the downloadable other ones so and that is 40 percent off then if you just want children's book you can do the children's book bundle which is the kid book pitch course where you write a book, illustrate a children's book. The um, There's art recipes for drawing faces that I teach and redrawing black history, that's cool. Now, all that is also in the bigger, the my semester courses too. So everything is in the semester. My brilliant portfolio is 30% off it's got boot camp character with Zoe and Riley, super great. It was a huge hit last year, so we're doing it again this year. Editorial illustrating for magazines and more. Hot markets for your art pot part A. And those markets are, I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe somebody put that in. Portfolio review that self-paced and redrawing black history self-paced. So that's also really nice, but it's all on the website. So I won't um, deal with that. Let me see if um, we have any. So people, do you have any other questions for our brilliant women? Um, Lydia asks, what inspires your color palettes? What do you think? What inspires your color palettes? Mm -hmm. I think um, I just love all the colors. <laughs> all the colors, yeah, agree. Yeah, and I try to do muted things. I think, oh, I'll do something muted and a bit calm. It never worked. Yeah, hot well, pinks just appear, and that's it. <laughs> well, bright colors do very well. Also, for me, I'll see a tube at the art supply store, and the color, I'm like, oh, I want to buy that. So, and then I squish out a bunch of the paints mm -hmm. on the palette. So, um, there we but go. But it's about balancing with neutrals too, to make the bright colors pop. And I just think choosing colors is like really fun. Yeah. It's my favorite part. Clothes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Choosing clothes. You just pick what you like and try to not pick the same ones over and over or pick the same, but 
add new ones, challenge yourself. Like I did not use blue for a long time as a professional illustrator. I don't think I use blue. <laughs> and then one day I made a like a six foot by two and a half foot painting using only blues. I loved it. So, you know, whatever, it's art. Okay, um, I think what we'll do, and can you both stay on for a few more minutes while we pop up a guest? Because sure. they may have questions for you as well. So um, I'd like to pop someone up and then at the end, we will do a giveaway of the Artie book course. And if you've already bought it, you can gift it to a friend. So, and don't forget the sale ends today and tomorrow's last day signing up for Artie book course. So it's all on the website too. So let's see, go to people. There's a thing that says raise hand. If you would like to um, uh, be, pop, be popped up on the screen, raise your, your paw and I will then um, select somebody and you can ask us anything if you uh, uh, anything at all if you have a, an idea for an arty book or whatever you want so press that raised hand button and uh, let's see who we get and I'll just say there are so many good questions and obviously we could we could spend an entire day answering these questions yeah. but I know well, that you have a chance to ask in the courses too. Mm -hmm. um, while people are uh, raising their hands, uh, is there one more question there, either of you, that you see that you want to answer? Uh, do we go through so called imposter syndrome? And what are our thoughts on that? Mm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Especially with like, Facebook. Yeah, especially with this book, I have no idea if it's any good. I'm waiting for people, I'm waiting for all the bad reviews to come in saying it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, stop. No, no. But you had an editor, you had an art director. <laughs> yeah. Like said It's really normal when a book comes out to freak out. It's very vulnerable, right, Katie? Oh, I kind of hated my book for... A hot second. Yeah, is that you what's know? happening to me? I've been mine for years. <laughs> no, <laughs> <it up>. hey? <laughs> no idea. I'm like, this is really good. <laughs> it's out of print by now. It's 10 years ago. No, so, whatever. But um, I didn't have social media then. Okay, so let's see. Let us do uh, Natalie Mitchell. Natalie, would you like to, Kim, if you want to? pop her up it's always fun and I will do a uh, career tarot for Natalie and here is hello Natalie hello Where do you live, Natalie I live in San Jose California oh sunny and pretty um have you taken Matt's courses before no, I haven't. I've been stalking them um, for so long. I think I found one of your free PDFs or something once, Lilla, online um, and loved it. And I've been creeping ever since. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm really glad you're here. Um, do you have a question for me? Would you like Career Tarot? Do you have a question for our artists? Oh, geez. I would just say um, if you were on the fence about signing up for um, the class, what one thing would you tell me to push me over the edge? Uh, you're worth it. It's yeah, there you go. This one precious life. Go for it. This is your life to make fabulous. You can change your life in a day. You can do one thing that really changes. This may be the beginning of a whole new chapter for you. You don't know how far you can go until you try. That's so true. Did that work? <laughs> Thank you. It's pretty darn convincing. I think it did. 
And look at the chat. I don't know if you can see the chat. Um, they're like, Natalie, yes. <clears throat> they're going, Natalie, the classes are wonderful. You won't regret it. Peer pressure, lol. That Greg is really funny in, in the chats, and Greg wrote that chat. <laughs> He's our class comedian. Um, <clears throat> uh, British Jenny says, ha ha. She's our writer. Uh, she writes the newsletters and everything. She wrote, ha ha, we need to stop mentioning it's a cult until after people are signed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the best thing to do, even with full time work. The structure it gives you grow so much. So what 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 do you want to what kind of art do you want to do or be or or what career do you want to make books? Do you want to already book? Is I had an idea um, for a book for a while called um, Cats Wearing Pants, where it's in um, either a book of cats wearing pants or um, I was thinking maybe it would need to be a calendar because I don't necessarily have a story arc for um these cats and how they decide to wear pants it's really an excuse to illustrate cats wearing pants yeah. so. <laughs> I love it I love it I think that's really smart a calendar a deck of cards mm -hmm. a um, deck of cards would be fun reading cards perhaps mm -hmm. it could be an arty book if you say a little something about each cat even mm -hmm. if it's a sentence, so you have cat and pants, a sentence about the, it could be like name and like a form next to each, like name, uh, you know, a so-and-so cat, um, a, uh, uh, hobbies, interests, likes, dislikes, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It could be anything. So that's fun. Do you like to write little tidbits like that or is that not I do I love so I um was joined SCBWI for a couple of years and I dabbled in kid lit because I feel like my artwork lends itself to more um children's mm -hmm. books or home decor or something um for children and that's what people have told me so um so it's definitely um, my artwork could be in a book or it could be something um, bright and cheery, paper goods. I'm not really yeah. sure. I, I'm Stage not sure to be perfectly honest. Cool. Yeah. So what should she take? What course? Um, Artie book, which is now, yeah, they're saying Artie book, home decor, Artie book, Artie book, illustrating children's books. Yeah. I would just mm -hmm. go look on the thing on on the uh, site and oh tarot okay should I do a little career tarot for you oh for me yeah for you that would be awesome please okay, right. <laughs> all right here we go so and one day I'll make these a deck but you know I'm a busy girl right now okay so I want everybody to send really good Vibes to Natalie. Oh, a card popped up right side up. Um, and we're just going to breathe for a minute. Okay, so first one, style and take photos on Instagram. Can you, do you have an Instagram thing? I do, it's Nat Mint Design. Eve's actually posted my link. Or oh. I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Okay, can you put your artwork on there? These cats? I could. I haven't, believe it or not. The um, you mean the cats wearing pants? I have not posted any cats wearing pants. I would start there because you're gonna get positive feedback, and then that will spur you on too. It's good to just get it out. You know, the universe wants you to like show it. More people are. You know, we always hear scary stories, but honestly, our community very caring, very nurturing, very kind. 
it's safe, you know. Okay, next. Work at a creative job. What do you do now? And that doesn't have to be full time. Um, what? what do I do now? I'm a freelance graphic designer, and I was an in-house graphic designer for 20 years before that. Okay, so you do work at a creative job. Do you enjoy it? I do. I love it. Yes, I love oh, it. Good, good, good. So it's affirming that. Um, it says uh, update, refresh your website. Oh yeah, I need I I do need to do that. That's that old song and dance. That will really be good. You can take the portfolio review course that I made for everybody had a million questions about portfolios, websites. So that's what that is. That will help you. Or just look around and see. Um, I've been getting this in a lot of readings. Rethink everything. <laughs> oh, that geez. That's, that's not daunting or anything no. that's kind of how I, <laughs> that's kind of a good feeling actually it gives you the feeling that you don't have to stay where you are you can always change and move forward if you if you decide to anything pop in your head that you care to share when you see that just um, switching to more illustrative work um, rather than client work. I, I love my clients and I do love the work, but it's um, it's not nearly as satisfying as creating illustrations. So if I could somehow um, match up that, that creative illustration with client work, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be great. And I'm going to, I have one more card and then I want uh, our ladies here to chime in. Okay, I don't know if this is at all right or anything. It says the last one, focus on clay. Do you do anything with clay? Could you Not make a single thing. I once got a pack of Sculpey back in the day, but not anything since then. <laughs> because what I'm feeling is that's a way for you to just do something completely unexpected and different and not what you do. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to sell it. You don't have to monetize, but just to like mm -hmm. break out a little, you know, like the rethink everything, make some clay. So I get the feeling that, you know, for, even for like an hour or two, like it doesn't have to be the rest of your life or like a whole big thing, but like <laughs> maybe break out that uh, Sculpey and, and make a cat. Yeah, give that's yourself such a fun idea. Yeah, give yourself permission to play and just have fun. I think like a big shift in my work happened when I gave myself permission to make ugly art and I just made a ton of art and it discovered some things I really liked along the way. So mm -hmm. yeah. R Ruth, your thoughts, your advice? Yeah, I think um, when you said about, you said something sitting on the fence and what would you know what's the advice just to push you over I think like you're ripe for it it's doing all that graphic design like having a creative career but also wanting to expand into the next level because graphic design is like the basics of illustration really I mean, it's all, you have to know about where to place things and what colors to use and how to lay a page out. Mm. So illustration is like a step beyond that. So, well, to me, that's what it feels like. And so you can only enhance your graphic design by having illustration skills. And you can only enhance your illustration by having really good graphic design skills. So I think you're gonna be really successful. I love that yeah. advice column by Ruth Burroughs. <laughs> it's true. Like you're in the creative space. Yeah. You're designing pages. You're doing typography and color and placement. Yeah. Nina says, thank you, Ruth. That so spoke to me too. How many of you are graphic designers or something in an art relate art career? That's not illustration type in what it is. Because I know we have a lot of people in design careers, illustration, graphic design, or have been in the past, magazine design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 
um, or maybe you are teachers or animators. That's so great. Um, cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. This was a thank you for having me. Wonderful. It was a pleasure. It was great get, meeting you. I hope I see you in class. We'll have a lot of fun. I have a feeling you have a great sense of humor, which is gold. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. We are now coming up on the hour. So we're going to do the giveaway. Here's how we do the giveaway. Where's my where's my thing? Where did I put? Oh, here it is. Um, I'm going to say, a, oh, and thank you so much to Natalie. Everybody send her some heart love. Um, we are going to give away Artie Book Course. Is that right? Becky, that's from giving away, right? <laughs> She's like, well, we've gone over this. I'm sorry. I'm teaching a course. I'm running an agency. You know, it's insane. Oh, thank you, Becky. Okay. Um, if you have already signed up for the course, you can gift it to a friend. Here's how we do the giveaway. I'm going to say a category. You can guess as many times as you want, as often, and so forth. Uh, Kim and I will be trying to look for the first person that answers correctly. But if we don't see the first person, it's who we get. You get what you get and you don't get upset. We just grab one that we see. And okay, here's Greg. A broken synthesizer keyboard, old props from Indiana Jones movies, my powder blue members only jacket. Oh, wait, jump the gun. Yeah, he does that. He does it. And he's in all the classes and he's really fun. And everybody's super kind and nice. You can see from the chat. It's a very supportive group of people. You'll love it. Okay, the category today is an animal. Go. An animal. And I'll give a hint, possibly. And it starts with so fast. I announced the letter. W. I should slow them down. Oh, I thought oh, I saw it. it. Yeah, I saw it. Okay. So Kim is going to pull her. She's going to scroll back and find one. Um, I think the first one I saw was um, Deborah. Yeah, that's what I yeah. see. Eco Valley. Eco Valley. Hey, Deborah. Yay, yay, yay. That was fun. Proof. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I would show the proof. Um, it was a wombat which was one of the first illustrations I was ever asked to do was draw a wombat. So I had to go to the national, uh, the, the New York Public Library scrap, scrap uh, library and get photos because it was before internet. So yeah, it was whatever. Yeah, I don't know what they, they look sort of just like some road end of some kind. They're cute. Yay, Deborah, I'm so excited. Were, were you signed up for Artie book course yet, Deborah? She is, so you can gift it to somebody or sell it on the on the open on, in the dark web. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. That was good. Oh, this was so great. I want both of each of you to give some tip or motivation for these people who really want to have careers like both of you. You have such incredible careers, and be sure that you buy their books. This is Ruth's and this is Katie's and there are more to come and they have other products too. Um, any advice you have to these people who want to be like you too when they grow up? Um, I would say just push through. There will definitely be moments where you're like on the edge of either saying, screw it all, I don't want to do this or making the jump to it just push through because a lot of people don't and so if you're the one that pushes through like that's that's where the success starts to happen yeah i love it that's so true you can't know unless you try yeah 
Ruth? Um, frighten yourself a little bit. Mm. Like, like get out of your comfort zone and do something a little bit scary. Yeah, like play with that clay. <laughs> play with some clay today. Oh, that's wonderful. Get out of your... What did you do, Ruth, that was scary? I know you've done a bunch of things. I just opened an art shop. Yeah. <laughs> in a country you haven't been in in a long time. Like a bricks and mortar shop after the pandemic <laughs> and without really thinking about it. And yeah, that was, that was quite scary. But um, it's paying off. So brilliant. You can do your illustration, have people come by, say hi, you sell some stuff. Yeah, open invitation to everyone in the UK. If you're, nobody ever comes to Lincolnshire. It's like so off the beaten track. But if you're passing by, please come and see me. I wish I could. I wish, it, can you open one near me? Sure, yeah, the US branch coming yeah. soon. Oh <laughs> Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter because actually I have a big reveal in a week or two that I'm only sending out to people on my newsletter, maybe I'll do it on the Matt's newsletter too. And then I would like about six or eight um, people to come here to test out a, a course I'm doing. So lots of goodness. Thank you everybody, sign up now. Yeah, the, uh, the um, on the littlerogers.com. And of course, absolutely get on the makeartthatsells.com newsletter so you get all kinds of stuff. Though well, there are two different businesses. The lilarogers.com is the art agency, my agency, and I teach at makeartthatsells.com. That's my e-course platform. Okay, lots of goodness. Don't forget today's the last day of the sale. And if you're going to do it, do it. And Becky, just put the link in. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, my lovely artists. It was Thank so you. great to find you and Matt's and Thank scoop you, you up. Um, and I hope we can do this again sometime. It would be great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here and participating. It was a, a real pleasure for me. And people in the arty class, I'm going to see you Monday for our live Zoom. Good luck with your assignment. I cannot wait to see what you do. You got your big assignment today. Okay, thank you, everybody. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.